for uh, taking the time on your Sunday, and especially on a beautiful day like today, and spending some time in God's house. Uh, got a few announcements done for us this morning. First of all, uh, if you are visiting today, uh, please uh, introduce yourself to me during coffee, and uh, we'll get to know each other a little bit better, have a chance to uh, uh, share some stories or whatever, and uh, that's always enjoyable for me. <clears throat> Hopefully for you as well, so I just throw that out there. Um, the other things are in the bulletin, but I'm going to uh, lift up a few of them. First of all, Tuesday, May 23rd is our grilling thing. Uh, we are so happy to have uh, a chance to be together uh, around a table of food, and uh, that starts serving at 5 o'clock on uh, Tuesday evening. Then we also have a quilt out in the Messiah room. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, you really should. Uh, Dennis uh, is an incredible uh, quilter, and we're very thankful that he has offered that to us. Uh, for that. Thank you, Dennis, for that. Uh, so you might want to buy a raffle ticket for that quilt. Then, uh, this week is a busy week here at Kenwood. We have the rummage sale, and I know that there's been a lot of stuff brought already. Hopefully, if you have brought your stuff, we better get it down there just to get a table. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and looking forward to that uh, this week. The last one is just the senior luncheon. Again, I can't tell you how fun it is to be together. Uh, we have some good conversations. Usually we leave laughing and full, which is always good. Uh, we're going to be at Foster's on Wednesday, June 7th. And we get together about 1130. And who knows, sometimes we're there for an hour, sometimes we're there for an hour and a half. And I'm sure there's some stragglers past that occasionally. Uh, any other announcements this morning that we need to uh, lift up before the congregation? If not, uh, I invite you then to just uh, pause for a minute, take a breath, and uh, prepare your hearts for worship and start praying with music.
is Psalm 66, and you kind of divide yourself into nice little groups. We're going to try what we did last week. Uh, we're going to start with this side. It will be uh, the first verse, and this uh, middle group is going to follow up with the bold letter verse. So let us uh, join together in our psalm. Bless, Bless our God, our God our who peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living.
They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I know I've got a couple of kids who want to go for it. Hi, Molly. How are you this morning? Any other kids? I've got to all about my phone. Perfect. How's it going? Pretty good? So so? I'm so so. Well, good morning. Good to have you guys with me. There you go. Uh, you're not all so kiddish. You're our young adults as well. But I'm going to ask Molly a little bit. So what's today? You know what, what is today? Is it a special day? It's Mother's Day? All right, good. I'm glad you know that. And what's special about your mom? Be kind here. <laughs> what's special about mom? What? You don't remember? <laughs> is she kind? He's pretty kind? Yeah. Does she give you good food? Yeah, yeah. Does she, what else does she do? She brought you to church? <laughs> and you like that, right? <laughs> I, this is the first time I've seen Molly pretty shy, so I don't know. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a, a, a thought here. Since it's Mother's Day, we want to be thankful for moms, aren't we? Right? Thankful for moms. We won't ask that your mother, you know, yeah, keep that a secret. So, well, would you be, would you like to take up her flower? Would that be okay? If you had to take her flower for Mother's Day? And you know what? Since you are here, and roses, no less, right? I'm not sure how, yeah, they took the, the prickers off, that's what I said. How about take two? Okay, can you take those to mom? And just want to let you know, we're thankful that you are here, and someday you might be a mom, and we hope that you will be a good mom like your mom. Okay? So you can take that, and I'm going to have <laughs> some together, such sweets. Oh, I'm going to have you guys take gifts to you guys for lose. And then, uh, if you want to wait, Natalie, do you want, we were thinking that we were going to uh, how many uh, moms do we have here? Wow. Moms and grandmas. <laughs> We've got a few roses here. We'd like to give them to you. Natalie, Adam, your, what's your friend's name again? Addie. Addie. Addie, can you come up for a minute? Addie, you can help me. <laughs> and uh, I'll hold this uh, and you guys can distribute to however many we've got. So if you're a mom, just raise your hands so they know who to give them to. You guys ready? Now, oh, you can help too, Molly. You want to take one to somebody? Raise your hand if you're a mom or a grandma. Grandmas are, are special too. Got one? Good. This could be all over the place and we don't care. Okay? You got to raise your hands though. Sorry. That's just the way this system works. Got some more. Yeah, go ahead. A couple more. We got some more grandmas and moms here. Our, our thing is that we would empty this as a symbol of God's love for you. And God empties God's self to bring love to your, to your lives. Anybody else got more? I'm not seeing it. There we go. Take some more out there. God? Okay. More. We got some more moms back right here. Yeah. Sorry, Brad. You don't get one. <laughs> Father's Day will give them something. Here we got some more. We got enough. Perfect. Any more? Grandmas got some. Who did not get one yet? Who did not get one? Okay. We got. We got more flowers. We got a few more. Don't be shy, because we have enough, okay?
got any more? Okay, got it? Oh, man. Don't be afraid. Perfect. Yeah, Joan's a mother, too. So, uh, just to uh, kind of uh, restate, uh, God empties himself for us to live his love. So we are hoping to get rid of all of our, our roses, and uh, I hope that you feel the love that God has for you as moms and grandmas, and uh, as, as women in general, and as men too, but, but so thankful for all that you do uh, for our church. Thank you for being that kind of example of uh, Christian love in our midst and our community. Thank you so much. And Molly, thank you for just being yourself. And yeah, someday she will be a mom. And this will all make sense to us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. May the gentle Christ who comes to us in Easter fill our hearts and be with us today. Walk with us. Amen. And my hope this morning <clears throat> is to invite you to accompany me on a short journey and to ask the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would walk with us this morning. We are just two Sundays away from Pentecost and the Sundays of Easter are almost over. This is, uh, we have one more Sunday to light uh, the Paschal candle and uh, then we will only use it occasionally. Uh, but the text today is perhaps uh, positioned kind of strangely in our calendar. It takes us back to the night of Jesus' arrest. So if you read a little bit of the description on top of those uh, scripture lessons, you realize that's kind of strange. We're at Easter and we're reading uh, pre-Easter uh, text this morning. But in this text, Jesus reminds the disciples that although he will soon be leaving them, he will not leave them orphaned, but will send an advocate to be with them forever. Today we are celebrating Mother's Day. Now normally, I wouldn't preach on Mother's Day. I'd probably take the text. Mother's Day is... Not necessarily a, a, a religious uh, a celebration, but it is a celebration of uh, women and life. And for that reason, I might actually venture into Mother's Day ideas. And I am doing so today. I feel very good about that. Spent some time with the text. I found some things that I, I found very interesting. I like the idea of uh, mothers uh, celebrating the goodness of life. Uh, the Proctor Journal every year has a Mother's Day celebration piece to it. And so the kids tell us what they like about their mothers. It's uh, the Bayview kids. They're in third grade. They interview these kids or they write them down. And then it gets uh, brought into the journal. And uh, it, you see some of the really interesting things, the typical stuff. She's nice. That was one. She's nice. She uh, puts chocolate chip cookies in my pancakes. That's also good. My grandson uh, mentioned that his mom is, uh, likes coffee in the morning. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I'm sure there's a story behind that, but we'll just let that set for a minute. So it's all the normal special things one might expect to hear from kids. But the overriding message was this, that moms are those who walk with us, who take care of us, and can be counted on to be there no matter what when you need that. That's the overriding message. I think there's something like that happening in this text this morning as well. So I invite you to just walk with me a little bit this morning as we go through that. It maybe changes how we think about the Holy Spirit, but I appreciate the idea of an advocate. The advocate is someone who will be with you. That's the intention of the word. That word advocate is interesting. It's a word, it's a title that is a part of a legal system. It's legal language. It's a legal assistant or a defense lawyer's helper. I always think of Perry Mason. I don't even remember Perry Mason. Wow, I'm gaining myself. I don't mind doing so this morning. He had these two assistants. You remember their names? Della Street and Paul Drake. Yes. There are two assistants to Perry Mason. While Perry Mason may be in the courtroom, Della and Paul were seen somehow running from one place to another trying to round up witnesses for the defense or finding evidence to help their client. The word uh, advocate, paracletum is the translation, is one called to an aid 
or as an aid, or one called us alongside to give help. Seems like a rather appropriate idea for Mother's Day, for often mothers play that role in our lives. Someone who helps and walks alongside. Here's the other special thing about the Advocate or Holy Spirit. He has promises to not leave us orphaned. What is Jesus talking about? Almost every child at some point worries about what it would be like to not have their parents. It wouldn't be normal if you didn't have that run through your mind every now and then. To lose that person who you know knows you. To lose that person who you know will walk beside you and be with you. A mom's love is like that. It suggests that it's the kind of love that no matter what will always be there and can be counted on no matter what. So what Jesus is saying is something deep as a mother's love. Jesus knows that his love is that kind of love. And to lose that love, that one to walk beside you, would be devastating. This love is not just personal, but affects everything we are and everywhere we look. Here's what Jesus says. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. And I want to just pause for a moment, because I want you to think about that. Because the word for world is cosmos. Which means that the loss of Jesus is cosmic in scope. It's as if the world, the whole world, would be thrown off its axis. And any sense of balance would be somehow destroyed or compromised. Is it any wonder that Jesus offers this promise of an advocate to walk alongside us when our whole world is devastated and off its axis? Someone to walk with us, along with us, someone to advocate for us when our world is turned upside down. Jesus doesn't stop there, however. Yes, you will no longer see me, and the world, the cosmos, will, will be empty without me in it. But listen, because I live, you also will live. We often wonder what the Spirit is and what it is doing. Luther said that the Spirit is always calling, gathering, and enlightening the church, keeping it sanctified and kept in one true faith in Christ, keeping it united to Christ. <clears throat> On my bedstand is a very important book. It's a book that tells the story of my family. It's a genealogy that goes back over 200 years. There are all sorts of people in this book, names, dates, whatever. There are also uh, more than dates in that book. There are stories shared about what it's been like in the past and what it might look like in the future. It's a, a story that tells us that there is a future and you need to just hold on. It connects us. It allows us to dream about life yet to be. Jesus tells his disciples that because I live, you also will live. It might seem out there in some distant future, but I am alive and I am, uh, I am there to be with you, Jesus says. I will reveal myself to you again. So walk beside me again this morning. It's this invitation to know that Jesus has sent the advocate to walk with us. That has, uh, has us looking expectantly into each new day. What is God doing today? Where is Jesus with us in his spirit today? And where will he lead us into the future? As we age, and I say that uh, very, very cognizant of the fact that I'm including myself, we do tend to look differently at the passing of time. Each day we get closer to that moment when the revelation of who Jesus is, is met with expectation. I'm just closer to that than I was, you know, 10 years ago. Where the routine of daily life has a bit more mystery attached to it. Maybe we get a bit anxious about all that stuff. But maybe we also begin to embrace that future and that promise. Imagine, Jesus says, as we walk together today, on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. It's time to take a breath. Our walk has just 
begun. But our hearts are filled with wonder, for our advocate has not left us orphaned. We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. And we are all together with Christ in the Father. Happy Mother's Day. Happy knowing that on the journey, people walk with you. We have each other, and we have the advocate to be with us every moment of every day. That's blessings on your week. Amen. We join in the hymn. It is the insert uh, in your bulletin today. And uh, uh, we will rise in the last verse. Through your prophets, 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, you send your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick or grieving. Especially this morning, we bring before you Sandy Knives. Be with her and watch over Evelyn Schwanz. Be with Jim Corkola. Be with Kim Logan this morning. And anyone else whose name we mention <coughs> our love in our hearts at this time. Be with those preparing for surgery and those who come out of surgery and are needing to recover. Hear us, O God. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of their mother, the mothers who have lost a child. Support all of them this day in this difficult time. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Rejoice in the victory of Christ's resurrection. We lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to move around and share the peace with each other this morning.
for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, of the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea, and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymns.
In you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live into the new creation. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 840. 840. <laughs>